All right. guys grab a chair have a seat I've got announcements for you all right announcement announcement number one we are full on camp but if you didn't get a chance to sign up and you wanted to uh, we still have a waiting list going so if you are interested in camp let me know uh, we can still put you on a waiting list, and uh, we'll find out for sure whether or not you get in after the registration deadline. Uh, along the same line with camp, just so everybody knows, I sent out an email to your parents, but uh, you may want to remind them, camp payment is due. Like, it was actually due on Sunday, but I forgot to announce that. That was on me. Uh, so it's due this next Sunday, all right? So uh, pay for camp, all right? We need to, we need to pay for that so we can so I can pay for it. Okay, that is uh, it's coming up too, man. We're in the summer. All right. Second announcement is this Friday night. This Friday night we had a girls' paint night. All right. If you're interested, if you're a girl and you're interested, then uh, reach out to Caitlin. You can email her or text her or whatever you want to do. Um, let's see here, Caitlin. You want me to announce the? Do you have the card with you? Do you have a card? No. All right. On Friday, girls who are going. Hey, raise your hand if you're going to this this paint night. All right, so cool, quite a few. Uh, not you. All right, not you either. All right, um, if you're going to the paint night, uh, Miss, De you may not, you may not know her, but it's Austin's mom actually. Her name is Miss Deb. Miss Deb is gonna lead the paint step by step lesson so that everybody can make a painting that hopefully looks good. That's kind of dependent on yourself. But uh, anyways, um, here's the thing. Caitlin's going to have a card for her on Friday night. So y'all, when you get there on Friday, first thing you should do is go see Caitlin. So you and your mom, or you and your mom and the other lady from church you're bringing, whoever it is, uh, y'all sign that card as a thank you for Miss Deb, okay? Because like she's given up her Friday night also to come up here and lead y'all in painting. And I mean, like I've seen Caitlin's artistic ability. It's it's not good. So for, for Deb to be willing to lead Caitlin, I have to put her down to make myself feel better. So... Anyways, all right. Yeah, that's a, that is a can almost. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Friday night at six thirty, right? Six thirty. Oh, I can have it right here. Yeah, six thirty. All right. So be here Friday night. Cool. Next thing is, do you have an announcement? Is this yours? I've been wondering. All right. Uh, next thing is, next week is VBS. All right, which means. Uh, the campus is being occupied by, by the kids, so we will not have youth on Wednesday night next week, just so everyone knows. Um, but if you are in youth and you are helping in VBS, then come up here early at 2 p.m. during the week, and we're going to hang out. We're going to play games. On Wednesday of next week, we're going to do a Nerf battle again. It was a lot of fun last year, so we'll do that. But uh, let me know if you're planning on coming to this, all right? If you're planning to come out, come and hang out during the week of VBS, all right? Uh, like we did last year, we're going to take you out to do something fun to celebrate. Last year we went to Hawaiian Falls. Uh, I, th I think said so we're going to go to Hawaii this year, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> so we'll, yeah, we'll we'll do something. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go to. <gasps> we're not going to go to Hawaiian Falls. Anyways, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by myself. Uh, other announcements. Uh, Sunday school. Hey, if you're not coming on Sundays, y'all should come on Sundays. All right. Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. Sunday nights, Caitlin and Caleb are going through the Psalms. So we're going to take a look at a lot of Psalms over the summer. It's a good study. It's always good to look at the Psalms. Very refreshing. And also sometimes sad. But uh, mostly refreshing, all right? So y'all come on Sunday nights, and we'll talk about that. Uh, they'll talk about that. It'll be a lot of fun. Sunday mornings, come here for Sunday school, all right? 
Um, I want to pray for us real quick, and then I'm going to ask the band to come on up and lead us in a time of worship, okay? So let me pray, and then we will enter into that time of worship, all right? Uh, dear God, we thank you for this night. Thank you for the opportunity to gather in your name. I pray, God, your blessings over this time of worship. Let us just bring honor and glory to you in all that we do. We love you and praise you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, yeah, everyone can stand. Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great. Time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead, three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb. The lion and the lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. Our God, 
And all will see how great, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. stories of what they think your life, but I heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night you tell that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. To you are, to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you. To I am, to I am, to I am. I've seen many searching for answers, far and wide, but I know. We're all searching for answers, only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word, you're good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am. To I am, to I am. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Be so unexplainable I can hardly think of you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love love, love you're a good, good father to you are who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. The lamp who was slain, oh, 
dijo, di que sí. Sing the new song to hear the sit song. Heaven's mercy sing. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. in rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Struck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath, and living water. Such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. All right, if you need a Bible, you can visit Bob, the bookshelf of Bibles. All right.
we are in the book of Jude. All right, let me ask you, did anybody memorize Jude 3? Man, memorize Jude 3. All of Jude 3. Did anybody? Jude 3 is one verse. There's only one chapter in Jude. True. I'm sorry, is there something on the wall over there? <laughs> I'm just kidding. What, what you got? Okay, summarize it. <laughs> okay, I believe you. I believe you. All right, Jude 3 uh, is not a whole chapter. It's one verse. It's, Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write, appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. All right, that's the, the message, the main point of this book, this letter, uh, Jude. It's a really short letter, okay? It's, it's one page long. I mean, it's, it's 20, what, 25? Yeah, 25 verses, really short, okay? Um, but it's important, it's helpful. There's a lot of good things in here. So last week, that's what we talked about. We talked about who Jude was. Remember, he is the brother of James, which also means he is... The brother of Jesus. Yeah, that's right. So he's brother of Jesus, but he doesn't, you know, claim that when he's writing his letter. He just says, "Hey, I'm Jude, and I'm a servant of Christ." That's how he identified himself. The same way that James did, as a servant of Jesus, not as uh, the brother of Jesus or anything like that. He's writing this letter probably to the same people uh, that Peter. If y'all have ever, have y'all, y'all have y'all ever looked at First and Second Peter by chance? You ever seen those? Yeah, they're like near the back of the Bible, right before Jude, First and Second Peter. Peter wrote this second letter, uh, well, both of his letters, to um, Christians who were either facing or about to face persecution. And Jude might be writing to the same group of people in this letter. All right. So we talked about that. We talked about why he was writing the letter, which was to contend for the faith, if you remember that, uh, which is like to defend or fight for, stand up for, don't let somebody take over. Okay, like you stand up and fight for your faith. Okay, don't let these false teachers come in. Uh, to the church and take it over. He said that he needed to write about it because in verse 4, certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated who were designated for this condemnation. Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so Jude was concerned because people had taken the message of the good news of Jesus Christ, right? Which is that he is God uh, in the flesh. The Son of God in particular came and lived on earth uh, in flesh, right? Fully God, fully man. And he died on the cross for our sins and then rose again so that we could have victory in him uh, three days later and then ascended to be at the right hand of the Father. There were people who crept into the church that Jude was writing to who evidently in some way or another denied that. All right, that was a concern for him. So he had to write about this. He had to write this letter to help people contend for the faith. All right, so... I read through verse seven last week, and this week I'm going to go five. I'm going to read five through seven again, and I'm going to do that because five carries into this next topic that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so there's a couple things that you need to notice about this letter. Okay, first things first. If you flip over, like probably I don't actually, yeah, flip over like six or seven pages in your Bible to. 2 Peter chapter 2, all right? 2 Peter chapter 2. Howard, do you have that pulled up there? That was nice. I saw it. I saw it. All right, 2 Peter chapter 2. If you, For everyone who did, didn't know, Howard looked at it like he was doing it on his phone, but his, it was just his hand, so it was pretty cool. All right, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. Uh, if you read 2 Peter chapter 2, what you'll find is that this chapter pretty much it, it looks very similar to Jude, okay, to the whole, like, to the body of the letter that Jude wrote. Um, it's, so basically what, what it kind of looks like is Peter wrote this letter, and what you see in uh, 2 Peter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says, or what, really just verse 1, it says, But false prophets also aro- uh, arose among, among the people, 
just as there will be false teachers among you who secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them and brought, uh, bought them and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And then if you look at Jude, Jude is writing to a people who are experiencing what Peter had warned about. Okay, And if you look down at verse 17 of Jude, he says, you must remember the, the predictions of the apostles. Okay, So Jude's talking about the apostles who have warned about these things. They said that there was going to be false teachers in the church. And now Jude's saying, they're here. right? He's like, hey, there are false teachers in the church. Okay, And what's important about this for us today in 2022 is that there are still false teachers in the church. It's not like Jude wrote this letter to one church and then poof, like those warnings from the apostles are good because they've been confirmed. There were false teachers. Now we're set. Nobody teaches false te false things anymore. We're set, right? Uh, I think that Jude serves as a reminder that there are false teachers in the church the same way that Peter and Paul and their writings serve as reminders that we should be looking out for them. Jude's like, hey, seriously, be aware. Like this stuff happens. There are, there are false teachers in the church, people who don't teach right theology. They don't teach the right things about Jesus Christ, okay? So uh, that's just something to be aware of. Uh, that's why this is important for us is because there are still false teachers in the church and we need to be on, be on guard for that. We need to contend for the faith the same way that Jude wrote this to these believers here. So if you look at Jude, I'm going to start in verse 5 and I'm going to read through verse 13. It says, Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus who saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Let me stop right there for a second because I forgot to mention something that you're going to see kind of in a pattern here. Jude uses triplets. Jude uses three things to make a point three different times here. Okay, so in this one he says, uh, I want to remind you, although you once knew it, Jesus who saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe. So he points to, if you remember back in the Old Testament, there was this exodus where the, uh, the Hebrew people were enslaved in, in Egypt. Can you stop that? Thank you. And uh, they, were in, they were enslaved there in Egypt, and Moses led them out. After that, after Moses led them out of Egypt, there were people who didn't believe, and they were punished. Okay? And they serve as an example of that punishment. And angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. So he points to angelic beings who fell, who didn't follow Jesus, okay? Uh, who didn't follow God, who rebelled against God, okay? Uh, and they had this punishment, and that serves as an example, this punishment for rebelling against God. The next thing, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. All right, so he talks about this city, uh, these cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. There's an Old Testament story where these cities were very uh, filled with very perverted people who were living very perverted lifestyles against what God had designed and what God had desired. And so there's a, in this story, the cities are literally destroyed by God. It's their judgment. It's God punishing them for their sin. Um, and it serves as an example for other people who live outside of what God has commanded, who haven't you know, given their life to Christ, what that punishment looks like. Okay, so that's something that I wanted to point out to you all. Uh, he points out these things. If you look at 2 Peter chapter 2, Peter pointed out these same things. He went to the Old Testament, he pointed to Noah, and then he talked about angelic beings, and then he talked about Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's interesting because these, these like I said, these letters look very similar in that. Okay, And I, I just wanted to point that out mostly because I find it interesting. But moving on, verse eight, verses 8 through 13 is what we're really going to focus on tonight. Okay, So starting at verse 8, Yet in like manner these people also, these people being the false teachers he's talking about now, these people also, relying on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme all that they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them! For they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error and punished in Kor and perished in Korah's rebellion. These are hidden reefs at your love feasts 
as they feast with you without fear, shepherds feeding themselves, waterless clouds swept um, along by the winds, fruitless trees inlaid on them, twice dead, uprooted. Wild waves of the sea casting up the foam of their own shame, wandering stars for whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. All right, so we're going to look at these. So we look at the one first triplet that he talked about, which was the people of the Exodus. They, you know, they were they were saved by God, but then they rebelled against God. They were punished. Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, they they rebelled against God. They were punished. And then the last one that he talked about already was um, the angels who rebelled against God, and they were punished. Right? We call what do we call angels who rebelled against God? By the way, who said it? Demons. Yeah. That's what we know is demons, right? Satan, the devil, he was an angel, okay? Um, on the same level as Michael. It's funny because we're going to talk about Michael the archangel too. Um, but these these creatures, these heavenly creatures, rebelled against God. They were cast out of heaven, and now uh, there's there's punishment there. They, they have to be separated from God forever. Um, so those that was the first set of triplets. Uh, but the next thing that we're going to look at is this, the second set in verses 8 through 10. And here's the thing. This is kind of the way that these false teachers get away from God's teaching, the way they separate themselves from God's teaching uh, and teach whatever it is they desire to teach, okay? Um, so this is important for us in the church. These are things that we should all look out for, like be on guard for, watch out for people who do these things because it's dangerous, it's scary, and it's easy to fall into because sometimes the things that people teach that aren't biblically accurate sound a lot, sound really appealing, okay? Not a lot more appealing because we know uh, what the truth of God's word promises, but it does sound appealing in different ways. And so these are things that I want you guys to be able to have in your back pocket and know, okay, if somebody does these things, this is a sign of a false teacher. According to the Bible, this is not something that anybody who's angry at whatever sect of teaching uh, said. This is what the Bible says. This is what God warned about in his word, okay? So that's why I want you guys to be aware of these things. The first thing that you see uh, that that uh, Jude points to is that false teachers defile their flesh. Defile their flesh. All right, what in the world? Does anybody have any guess what it can mean to defile your flesh? What is defile? What does it mean to defile something? Def what does it mean to, de to defile something? Anyone? What? I think that's unfile, actually. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. What'd you say? To make unclean or unpure, yeah. To, to mistreat, to, to make it wrong, right? To, to hurt something or harm something. It's like destructive, right? Uh, so somebody defiling their flesh, does this mean like somebody gets a tattoo and now their flesh is defiled or something? I don't think that's what it means. I certainly hope not. Uh, I certainly hope not. Somebody falls on a skateboard and has a scab. Now they're defiled. No, I don't think that's what they're talking about. No. Uh, what, what else? What else could this be talking about? I think if you look back at Jude, if you look at verse four, what he's talking about is individuals who have taken the grace of God offered in Jesus Christ, which is the forgiveness of sin, and they've turned it into sensuality. Okay, they've turned it into this practice of um, it seems like. Uh, sexual immorality in some ways, okay? So these individuals, what these false teachers were doing was they were telling people in the church, hey, you're good to do whatever you want. You can go back to different pagan styles of worship. It's not a big deal uh, because God's grace is sufficient. You're covered, right? You're set, no problem. Um, they were teaching that it was okay. And I think that this is the warning from Judas that if you see people who are teaching that, that doing these things that go against what God uh, has designed for our flesh, then we should definitely not be doing those things, okay? Uh, there's different, I mean, there, okay, here are some examples that you might have heard of if you, okay, does anybody ever study like cults or anything? Anybody ever looked into cults a little bit? Okay, sometimes it's like interesting because like how did people fall for that? Sometimes it's really sad, uh, but here's the thing. Uh, sometimes what, what people do in different cults and different uh, false teachings is They'll tell people that it's okay to harm their bodies with like really serious drugs. Like really, it's like really okay because like that's totally fine. This is a way to experience God on a new level, right? That's bad teaching. That's bad theology. That's not good. That's not accurate, okay? That's an example of someone teaching you it's okay to defile your flesh. Um, 
Another example, uh, this was actually, okay, so Dan, if, you, if you come on Sunday mornings, you've heard Daniel mention Mormonism more than a few times. Uh, and I've been studying it a lot, too, because we're going on this mission trip to Idaho. All right? So um, here's something interesting about Joseph Smith, who was the founder of Mormonism, um, which is he taught that it was okay for people, for other women to marry him, even though they were, he was already married. And his and the people that he was pursuing were already married, and he was like, "Yeah, no, God told me to." Like, yeah, God said it was okay this time, so we can get married. He did this no less than thirty-four times. All right, he married thirty-four different women. Eleven of them were already married women, and also this is the worst part. Some of not the worst part; it's all bad. But some of them were like mothers and daughters that he married. He married all these different people, and this is all under the guise of God told me it was okay. All right? So you see you see what I'm talking about? This is like, like it seems like, oh, that would never happen. No one would ever teach these things, but it did. Okay? Like, this does happen. People teach all sorts of different ways to defile our flesh, to hold on to, no, God says it's okay. God allows this. God gave me divine revelation, whatever it is. If you hear someone teaching that uh, that defiling your flesh in any way is okay in the sight of God, you should you should run. You should stay away from that person. That's not good teaching. That's not sound teaching, okay? Um, and I know that, like, yeah, that was kind of a dramatic example, but the reality is is that this could happen in the church, okay? There are people who use these manipulative tactics throughout the church that's happened throughout church history. Uh, so just be on guard for those things. Be on guard for that. The next thing that he says they do is they reject authority, all right? So... What, what I think that he's referring to here is people who reject authority uh, is individuals who deny the authority of God's word in particular. All right? Specifically, what he was referring to was people who, false teachers, who were saying that what the apostles had taught wasn't good, wasn't accurate. They had new revelation. They had better teaching, whatever it was. Um, and in that, what they were doing was they were denying the specific individuals who God had given specific revelation um, and understanding and wisdom to start his church, okay, the apostles. Uh, and, and for us, what this looks like modern day, because there's not apostles like there were then, that's not a, that's not a thing anymore in the church. Um, what, what it could look like for us today is like a pastor who, instead of preaching the Bible, starts preaching his opinion. Have you all ever heard this happen? Anybody? Okay, it happens a lot in a lot of different ways, and it's disguised in a lot of different ways that make it look really attractive and like, wow, that sounds good. I can get on board with that kind of teaching. Uh, but the reality is, is that this is false teaching. This is false teacher 101, people who reject authority. They reject not only the authority of God's word, but other believers, faithful believers who say, hey, what you're teaching isn't right. If you experience this and you, you, know, you have somebody in your life who's like, oh, well, this might be not so good, uh, I'm going to go talk to him about it and they deny it, they reject the authority of God's word, they reject the authority of other believers, then you should get out of that situation. Don't listen to that person. That's a false teacher. That's somebody who's not teaching what God's word says. All right. Now, what I'm not saying is the only way to teach anything on earth is you know, through the Bible. Okay. If you're going to teach a math class, then I think that you'd get really bored going through the book of Numbers. Right. You should use a math book. Okay. <laughs> but... Uh, but for uh, the purpose of somebody teaching from like a pulpit on a Sunday morning or like me on a Wednesday night or whatever, somebody teaching, claiming to be teaching from God's word, you need to make sure that that person is teaching from God's word. OK, uh, there. I mean, I have a lot of examples, modern examples of this, but I'm not going to get into that because I don't like name calling. But just just know this is a real and active thing. OK, be on the lookout for this. Look out for people who reject the authority um, of God and his word specifically. The last thing he says is that they blaspheme the glorious ones, okay? And we have to get into this for a second because this is a little bit, a little bit different than normal, all right? And I'll explain why. He says they, they, uh, they blaspheme the glorious ones. And then, so here's the thing. When he says the glorious ones, is he talking about, like, God? Or what do you all think? Glorious ones. What do you think he's talking about? Because look at the next verse, too. What do you think? 
do some research. Somebody read verse 10. Everybody's looking at the Bible, but no one can read out loud. Come on, people. I meant to say nine. That's my bad. Read verse nine. <laughs> it is in the air. Okay, so Jude says they blaspheme the glorious ones, and then he goes to talking about angels and Satan in particular. Okay, so this is very interesting, very interesting. What he's talking about, uh, if you look at the context, what he's talking about is people, false teachers that he's referring to, evidently put themselves on the same level as or talk down to, talk down about, whatever, um, angelic beings. Instead of respecting angelic beings for who they are and what God created them for, which was to specifically share his, uh, his, his word, right? Their an angel basically is another word for um, messenger, okay? So like they go out and they, they are messengers for God, all right? Um, in this example that he uses, do you all remember that story in the Bible at any point in time? The archangel Michael contending with the devil uh, who was disputing about the body of Moses. Anybody remember this Bible story? Okay, it's because this is not recorded in Scripture, okay? What this was is oral tradition, okay? This is like what happened after, here's what happened after Moses died. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 34, Moses died, okay? And then, yeah, I know, but Moses, <laughs> Moses died, and then what happened was God, God buried his body in a place that nobody knew about, okay? Unmarked tomb, nobody knows where Moses is buried. God did that, um, probably because the Israelites would have like worshipped his dead body or something like that. But regardless, yeah, I know, uh, but regardless, God moved Moses somehow, okay? So there was this tradition uh, that what happened during this was angel, uh, the archangel Michael, who if you look at Daniel chapter 10, or J Daniel chapter 12, and no, J Daniel 10, Revelation 12, you'll see Michael's name again, okay, well-known angel. Uh, anyways, what he did is apparently uh, was hiding or uh, burying the body of Moses, and evidently there was some conflict over the body with, with the devil, all right? And this is like, again, this is not something that's recorded in Scripture, probably because it wasn't necessary in Scripture up until this point where Jude's using it as an example to show even Michael, the angel, when he was having this fight with the devil, he didn't say, get out of here, devil. We don't want you anymore, right? Have you all heard people say things like that? Uh, instead, he said, the Lord rebuke you, right? Like he turned to God for this, okay? Even in this story, he turned, for, to, turned to God for this, Okay. So if you look at Hebrews 2, 1 and 2, you'll see that, that angels have been used by God to share his message. Okay, this is why angelic beings are powerful. They're, they're different than us. And uh, we shouldn't put ourselves on the same level as them. And also we should be hesitant to talk down to angelic beings or uh, even demonic beings because God created them also. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit weird because it's not from the Bible, but he quotes it like it's truth. So we need to just be aware of that. It's a little bit different. All right. Uh, the last thing that I want to point out real quick before I wrap up is these personalities of false teachers that he goes to next. He says, uh, woe to them, they walk in the way of Cain. Everybody knows who Cain is, right? Who was Cain? What was he known for? Killing Abel, his brother. Yeah. All right, what about Korah? Who was Korah? Anybody heard of Korah before? Yeah, that was that one dude. Korah rebelled against Moses. Um, read number 16 to find out what happened next. Uh, let's see here. And then you have Balaam. Okay, you all know the story of Balaam, I'm sure. What happened to Balaam? His donkey. His donkey talked to him, okay? Uh, it was a wild situation. Go back and read that in Numbers. I'm supposed to say Numbers, not Number. But anyways, uh, go back and read that there. Um, these false teachers, basically what Jude says is, is that these false teachers, uh, they, they teach and they act the same way that these people did back in the Old Testament, the same way these people who rebelled against God in different ways, false teachers, apostates, they do the same thing, all right? So that's the warning from Jude, and that's something to look out for. I'm not going to get into this anymore because that's actually the point of the small group, but what does 
Jude 8 through 13 mean for you? Now, if you look at, by the way, if you look at verses 12 and 13, I'm not going to do it justice tonight. I'll get into it a little bit next week. Basically, not next week, VBS, the week after. But uh, basically what he says is that these people are useless. They're, they're harmful. They're, they're people we should stay away from. But this is what Jude 8 through 13 means for us. In order to properly contend for the faith and be on guard, we have to know what to watch out for, okay? Uh, the next thing is that false teachers have been around for a long time, and they'll find sneaky ways to creep into the church, okay? So we have to be aware of that. And then number three is to know the punishment, the seriousness that God gives to false teaching, all right? So we're going to do, we're going to break from here. I'm going to pray for us real quick to wrap this up. Uh, sorry, I went a little bit long. We have pizza in the back, so grab some pizza and then go to small groups. Let's talk this out a little bit. Let's just continue to work through this, all right? Let me pray for us. Dear God, thank you for this night. Thank you for your word and your truth. Dear God, I just pray that you would uh, move in this, this time of small group. Let us bring honor and glory to you. Um, God, just give us wisdom on how to contend for the faith and how to uh, stand firm for the truth that's from you and through your word. God, we love you. We praise you and we thank you for who you are. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.